I would say strength as a pass rusher, just his, his slipperiness, his ability to bend, his ability to shorten edges, um, the ability to use his hands to create an edge. Um, just very like flexible rusher that um, and versatility. You can you can line him up at multiple spots and rush the passer. Is he a guy who like comes in and picks your brain even though he can't be on the field? Yeah, he's he's here twenty four seven. I mean, since shortly after the Super Bowl, he was back here. You know, going through his um, rehab process. He's always a inqu inquisitive uh, person in the meeting room. Always you know wanting to know the reasons why. So. Um, and yeah, I know you you laid down a challenge to him after his rookie year to really kind of to dial it in. Has he kept that kind of mental focus even though he hasn't been able to do it physically? Yes, yes, he has. He's in there. He, you know, he's in all, all of our meetings. He sits right next to me in the meeting, actually. So he's yes, he has. He stayed on top of it. It's a matter of uh, you know getting with the trainers and, and uh, continuing this rehab and uh, getting back as fast as he can. How big of a challenge is it to, to integrate this many new faces that you're going to be expecting things from? And, and how big was it for Nick to be out here, you know, sort of leading the way on the first uh, of that OTA day? Um, well, it's, it's never easy. Um, but, you know, we try to identify guys that we feel like uh, can make the transition. You know, and the, import, and the important part is, you know, them being here early, early in the off season. you know, when we get into our phase one and two work is where we mm – -hmm. Um, you know, a lot of the behind the scenes stuff, you know, on the practice field that um, we're really, you know, we have a lot of individual time at that mm -hmm. period of time. So we're down there in my corner and we're, you know, just honing in on the, the details within the scheme, you know, and if they're, if they're able to be here through that process, mm -hmm. it gives them a really, really good chance um, in training camp to hit the ground running and then actually get better throughout training camp and just understand the, you know, the standard at which, you know, technique, um, the standard that we play at. So these guys have been here, you know, all been here since April 15th working on it um, and, you know, really pleased with where they're at so far. What are your quick takeaways from Robert Floyd and seeing him for a little bit on the field? Leonard? Or Leonard, sorry. Yep. Uh, <laughs> just the, one experience that he brings to the, to the table, you know, through the different schemes, the different places that he's played. You can tell he's a pro's pro. And then the athleticism and the explosion and the length um, his ability to just cover ground quickly, um, knowledge as a pass rusher, understanding of how to get to the quarterback. He's, you know, he's obviously a, a proven, productive pass rusher. And then just, um, just the love that he has for the game. He's like a sponge. You know, he's even though he's been in the NFL for a while, he's continuously like really detail-oriented person that wants to get it exactly right and, and works. And if he doesn't get it right, he's going right back in line to get another rep to try to get it right. Um, really, really enjoyed working with him so far. Um, just, you know, uh, the, but the, the length and explosion jump off the tape. Brandon Staley just said that Leonard's one of his favorite all-time players. He coached him, obviously, I think back in, in Chicago and then with the Rams as well. Have you talk to Brandon about, you know, Floyd's skill set and, you know, just finding ways to, to, to maximize what he can do within the course of this yeah. defense. Yeah, obviously, um, when we when we got our list for free agents, you know, and there's and there's thirty something names on the list and Leonard was one of them and I knew that uh, Brandon had worked with him so um, we connected on it and um, then just hearing the uh, conviction, you know, on Brandon's side of it of uh, you know, the the player the person, the love for the game, and then the skill set, you know, obviously even draws you more into it, you know, once you um, get the full picture on it. Um, so, you know, the endorsement that Brandon ga gave him was, you know, huge, you know, in the evaluation process to get someone that's been, you know, behind closed doors with him and really worked with him, you know, day to day. Does with he have much experience playing, playing from a three-point stance? Um, Yes, yeah, he does. Uh, I would say more experience playing out of a two-point at this point during his career. Um, last year in Buffalo, they asked him. He, he probably played 50-50 in Buffalo. You know, prior to that in L.A., you know, it was more of a two-point deal. Now, he would, on you know, on, on obvious passing down, sometimes getting a three-point. And then, you know, early in his career in Chicago, he was more of a two-point type uh, player. But uh, And we'll do a little bit of both with him. You know, you know when we had D. Ford here, D. Ford was a – Primarily a two-point dude, and um, once he got here, it was, 
you know, there's certain situations we wanted D putting his hand down. There'll be certain situations we want Leonard with his hand in the ground. And then there's sometimes we'll, you know, stand him up like you saw D Ford back in 19 and 20, standing up at times on the edge. So we'll try to, you know, anytime a player's really good at something, I'm, I'd be an idiot to just totally take it away from him and say, you can't do that. So he's excelled in, out of a two point in his career. Um, throughout my years, I've had guys that, you know, we're always known as a hand in the dirt defense, but then you get a unique skill set that uh, can excel from a two point stance and do really good things from a two point stance. You don't want to just totally take that away from a player. With Gross Matos, do you see him as somebody who'd be capable of that kind of adaptable role that you've had with Arden Key? Get different guys that have uh, played outside and been able to, to to move inside on some of those passing downs. Yeah, to be honest with you, you know, it's one of the uh, you know one of the characteristics that we did really drawn drew us to um you know uh etor you know was just the versatility um we've kind of you know had that through the years with like you said arden and uh, charles and many and just the different body types um we felt like we wanted to add a dude that could uh legitimately um do both at a high level you know play outside at a high level and then you know when needed you know schematically be able to bump him down inside and um uh, utilize his quickness and his uh, ability to get on fast edges on guards and uh, beat guards, you know, similar to what Arden did, um, you know, but you, you first got to be able to play outside, you know, before you can do any of that. And, uh, you know, just the way his length and, you know, he's got 275 pounds behind that length, uh, really good edge setter in the run game outside, you know, just the speed to power that he can generate from the outside uh, jumped off the tape and then, you know, when Carolina last year moved him in over guards, you know, you really saw his pass rush come alive as far as, you know, working edges with, with finesse and technical hand use. So um, really excited about Etor, another guy that at Penn State we really liked uh, coming out with the skill set, the length, the speed, the hand use, the technicality that he plays with, a uh, very diligent person. You, well, mentioned, you mentioned Floyd's scheme versatility. Does his experience dropping the coverage a little bit sort of add to what you guys could potentially do on third down? Yeah, he has a lot of experience doing it. You know, um, going back to Chicago, you know, they, they dropped, dropped him into coverage. And then at LA, you know, they didn't do it all the time with, you know, Leonard and Vaughn on the edge, but, you know, they would drop into coverage. He has a very good understanding of it. So it gives us the adaptability to use it if, it, you know, if needed and, you know, through the course of a game, which, you know, we haven't obviously done a lot of. What did Shaquille Brown show you in his tryout to, to earn a spot on that? 90 man roster just checked all the boxes that we needed checked off you know he got um he got hurt last year in tennessee and he was a guy that we coveted you know we had a a draftable type grade on him and then we really tried to pursue him and as an undrafted free free agent the previous year and lost out to tennessee and you know then he you know he tore his achilles um in the preseason just coming in here first we wanted to see what type you know uh type of football shape he was during the rookie mini camp you know i mean just I think he's, I don't know, eight months off the injury. So we just kind of wanted to see where he was, you know, from a conditioning standpoint. And then just, you know, once that box was checked, just, you know, see how he's moving on it, you know. And uh, he checked all the boxes during, you know, the short period of time that we were able to um, work with him during that rookie mini camp. Moved good, you know, wasn't wasn't favoring or anything. You can tell that he kind of had put it totally past him. So, you know, and just another guy with the, the – the size inside, very thick lower body, very explosive lower body. Um, one of the reasons, you know, we wanted him coming out of Troy the year before. So excited to get him here. You know, he's been here, you know, a couple weeks now and just continue to progress within the scheme and uh, get him into training camp and put some pads on and really see that size and explosion really come to life. How did you process, one, How did you process uh, the way the Super Bowl went down? I mean, I, as a as a coach, do you, did you look at the film right away and obsess over it? Do you try and put it aside for a time and then get back to it? Just um, you, you, got, you put so much into it, and then you wind up coming up short. You, you, you did so many good things to get there. I don't know how you kind of put all that stuff together. Yeah, it's um, it's, a, it's a difficult thing to do, you know, to climb the mountain and get all the way to the top and. You know, in the NFL, it's we're not dealing. It's not like Major League Baseball where you're dealing with a seven-game series, and if you mess up one of them, you still got six left. Or, you know, watching the NBA playoffs, seeing a couple teams get blown out by 30 and then come back and win a series, it's it's not that. And, you yeah. know, you 
you climb the mountain all year, you go through the ups, the downs, the adversity of a football season and everything that goes into it. You get you get to the pinnacle and then and honestly, um, for, a, for a good period of time, it just feels like your heart got ripped out of your chest and you're kind of numb to the world, to be honest with you, for a while. Um, and then, you know, reality sets in. You gotta, you gotta face reality. I'm a, I'm a firm believer in it, it, adversity shows your you know, your true, you know, you learn more from adversity and failure than you do, you know, just instant success. Mm -hmm. um, so you face the adversity, you face the failure um, head on. It should add a, a, a bigger chip to your to your shoulder or a stronger fire in your gut. And uh, you get to that day where, you know, you got to, you know, you never totally put it past you. You know, it's always there. The 2019 season will always be there. Last year will always be there. But, you know, the, the scar you know the the wound heals but the scar is still there so you got to come to grips with it you gotta do the best you can to put it behind you and then you know the main thing that, that gets me over it is when the players start coming back in you know and you yeah. feel the energy in the building uh with the players come back in so i i think i kind of truly switched gears about april 15th when all the guys got back in and hey it's it's go time for the next mm -hmm. you know you start climbing the mountain for the next year um and then the first part of your question, I, I dealt with both of them differently. The 2019 loss, I didn't watch the tape for about probably a month and a half. You know, I think I watched it like a week before off season started just to totally come face to face with it. And my initial plans this year was kind of to do, do the same thing just because of the sickening feeling that you have, you know, within yourself. But I decided before Coach uh, Shanahan let us out of here to go ahead and plug it on, digest it. Try the best you know you can to not just let it affect you daily. And uh, I can't move past imagine it. being. I mean, I remember sitting up in the press box, and there's the 